Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the A Bit Adventures podcast. We are here to bring you the latest and greatest geeky news of the week. Uh, I am your host, Sean Hayes. Um, so this this is the last week uh, of solo casts and like uh, special one on one interviews and everything. Um, so Courtney will be back next week, uh, assuming everything goes as planned. Um, so looking very much looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, so uh, I hope you all enjoyed the interview that I did with uh, Kaya Berries last week talking about Pokemon Unite. Um, so uh, we're hoping that we can get more guests like that on in the future. Um, so we're just we're keeping on the lookout. Uh, still waiting to hear back from some folks. Uh, there's also some scheduling conflicts like with time zones and things like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, so this is going to be another solo cast where we've got a bunch of news. Um, and we've got that, uh, that very, very tasty Spider-Man trailer to, to dig into. So very excited to talk about that. Um, so yeah. Sorry, I want to make sure that I stay hydrated. Uh, so, uh, why don't we get right into our, uh, our quick fire news. Uh, so first up on the quick fire news, we have Skyrim Anniversary Edition uh, because we all can't get enough Skyrim, right? Right. <laughs> so this is coming out for the 10th anniversary uh, on November 11th. Um, so I'm I'm going to break this down a little bit because there's a lot of like very confusing, conflicting information uh, uh, going around. So according to Bethesda's website. Uh, what the anniversary edition is, um, is it's a bundle, uh, that you, that will be paid. It's like a paid, like it's, it's buying Skyrim yet again, uh, that will include the special edition, um, the various DLC packs. So, uh, um, Dawn Guard, Dragonborn, and, um, Hearthfire. Uh, and, uh, we can see on the graphic here, uh, plus 500 plus creation club elements. So creation club was like a mod program that Bethesda set up. So these are sort of like a quote unquote official mods that are sanctioned, officially sanctioned by Bethesda. So they're, they're intended to work with the game. They're not intended to be like the silly weird mods you see of like replacing all the dragons with Thomas, the tank engine or macho man, Randy Savage or whatever. Um, so that that's going to be what's included in that. The confusion is uh if you already own Skyrim Special Edition on PC, Xbox or PlayStation, there is a free update um that will apply like next gen quote unquote stuff. Um a little unclear if that applies to PC, it said consoles, um, but as we can see on the graphic here, free next generation console upgrade, and then right beneath that it says PC. Uh, so, but there is like a next gen console upgrade um, to introduce like uh, some features that the cons that the new consoles have. Um, there will also be a free update to special edition owners that will include uh, the following. Um, sort of mods from Creation Club, which is fishing, survival mode, and there's a quest chain called Saints and Seducers. Um, so, uh, so, um, that's it. I mean, the, the big news that everybody's been talking about is, oh, fishing coming to Skyrim. You're going to buy it yet again. Uh, but there is a little bit more to that. Um, so if you already have the special edition, you will get this upgrade for free. Um, but they do want to sell you a new bundle. So there, there's that. Uh, next up, Halo Infinite. Uh, Halo Infinite, um, their campaign co-op mode and map editing in Forge mode not going to be not going to be available at launch. Um, it looks like they're going to spend more development time uh, to get these modes up and running. Um, 
So Campaign Co-op will launch in, quote, Season 2, and Map Editing in Forge Mode will launch in, quote, Season 3. Seasons are projected to last at least three months. So we're looking at possibly like a six month launch window for map editing and at least three months after the game launches in order to play campaign co-op. Um, this is controversial. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and honestly, I, I can't say that I blame them. Um, Cause these are, these are typically things that have been features like core features of past halo games. So, all right, next up uh, we have Fortnite. Fortnite is including a limited time imposters mode. Uh, and to sort of explain what it is, it's basically Among Us. Uh, like, apparently just blatantly copied. Um, Interscope, makers of Among Us, uh, they were not consulted. This is not a collaboration. Uh, they're also not happy. Um, they didn't patent any of the mechanics and everything, so, like, it's it's not a legal issue. Uh, it's just... What they're not happy about is that it's like, in their words, it was, quote, just a, a lazy ripoff um, instead of like taking those mechanics and doing something interesting within the Fortnite universe. They're just like basically recreating Among Us in Fortnite um, right down to like the maps and the tasks and everything. Uh, so there's there's some butting heads there. Um, it also uh, it's being pointed out that it sort of flies in the face of um, Epic's comments made during the sort of Apple trial of supporting indie devs and then uh, then turning around and taking Netflix's stance of, well, we're in competition with everybody, so we're just going to make Fortnite be able to do everything. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if this game development uh, uh, thought process and strategy continues and if they start just making more and more modes that replicate other games with the idea that like, Fortnite should be the only game that you ever want to play because it can do everything. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so it also introduced, like, I've also been looking up, um, just marveling at, like, some of the streaming technology that, like, uh, VTubers are using. So for those that don't know, it's, um, like, when you stream, you stream, like, using an avatar instead of, like, a webcam. Um and just the level of tech that's involved to do that is really impressive. Um, and it's getting me thinking, like, if there's a single platform like Fortnite that is trying to do anything and everything involving with gaming, and then you have this other element, uh, what is our timeline before we start reaching, like, Ready Player One? Uh, along, like, with VR tech. Um, so that seems really interesting. Uh, it just from like a world building, I, that's not really the right phrase. Um, I guess from a, from a development tech standpoint, uh, you have these sort of different technologies that it's the, the question is at what point are they going to start merging and coming together, um, to do this thing that was ultimately labeled as science fiction. Um, so yeah, uh, long story short. Makers of Among Us, not happy. Uh, this is a limited time mode, so we'll see. You know, it may just come and go, and then uh, there's not much to do about it. But uh, Next up, um, this is one of the weirder pieces of news. Uh, the Stardew Valley Cup. Uh, so this, is, this goes out to all of my fellow Stardew Valley players out there. Uh, uh, Eric Barone, uh, also known as Concerned Ape, is teaming up with Zach Hartman, YouTuber Zach Hartman, to host a 40 thousand dollar challenge based tournament where teams of competitors have three hours to complete specific tasks for points and then whoever has the most points wins the tournament uh this is built as a a stardew valley speed running tournament uh which is a phrase i never thought i would i would ever hear that phrase being uttered i also didn't like competitive stardew valley could possibly become a thing um i think it's weird i think it's great uh, and it's it's coming up with tasks and then assigning point values to them. Um, and like apparently like during the turn, they want to make this the big like streamed hosted event where during the tournament itself, there will be like surprise objectives that come up, um, you know, almost like a uh, 
uh, like in, in cooking show, like in some cooking shows where they have like a surprise basket ingredient or, or something or, uh, or in the case of Iron Chef, the culinary curveball, as it were, um, that, uh, will be worth a lot of points, but will be difficult because you kind of have to like pivot your strategy as you're going to see like if it's worth the risk um to like throw away whatever you're working on and like go focus on that get it done um yeah uh i think it's weird i think it's great um i i will be very curious to see how that happens uh i i unfortunately did not look up when uh, okay, so it says, sorry, and Gadget is reporting next month. Uh, oh, it's happening Labor Day weekend. Uh, so it'll take place at noon Eastern time on September 4th. Uh, let's see. Is it being streamed and where, uh, it will be on Hartman's Twitch channel. Um, so twitch.tv slash unsurpassable Z. Uh, this is so, okay. So according to the, the article, it's not the first competitive Stardew Valley event with cash at stake. There have been some Twitch rivals competitions. Uh, I'm curious to see how they do things like getting through season. I wonder if there's going to be things like in order to speed run your way to like winter is because they have like events of like, um, you get five points for like giving somebody a gift at the feast of the winter veil vale or winter star. Um, and so if you're in three hours, uh, are you just like wake like everybody waking up and then going back to bed and just like cutting huge chunks of time out? Uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm I'm really interested to see what happens with this. Um so yeah, uh so that is um and I'm gonna post it in the chat here, uh September 4th, uh noon Eastern time. In case people wanna like copy and paste it into calendars or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you're weird like me and you want to do that. Uh okay. Next up. Pokemon Legends Arceus. So this is, uh, there was a, um, and I think we talked about it a little bit last week, it, uh, Pokemon uh, Direct, Pokemon Presentation, Pokemon Presents, whatever it was called. Um, so they talked about this game a little bit. This is the next upcoming big game from Game Freak uh, being built as like an open world Pokemon game that kind of throws out a lot of conventions from the existing games. So it uses more like an action RPG battle system. Um, where instead of being turn based, like it's just like you get a turn, you get a turn. It's based on speed. It uses a system where uh, your speed determines how often you get to act. So with a high enough speed, like for every turn. Like for every like two turns you take, your opponent only gets one turn if your speed's higher. Um, uh, there are. So, like, you have your moves, like you have in Pokemon, but then there's, like, two variations of each move. So you can do, like, power style or agility style or whatever it's might style or whatever. So, um, where it's basically you can deal more damage, but it's slower speed or higher speed, but less damage. So, like, if you go agility style and you, you boost your speed up even further, you might potentially get three turns for every, like, you might get to act twice before your opponent gets to act. Um... They uh, talk about some open world mechanics. Um, now uh, it's been the case. Pokemon has always been the case of don't go in the tall grass. Like that's where the Pokemon live. Now it's you got to go into the tall grass to hide from Pokemon uh, because they're out. They're about some Pokemon are nice like Bidoof. They, they, they'll they like waddle right up to you and say hello. Uh, some of them like uh, Luxio don't want to be bothered and they will attack the trainer. Um. Because, like, you'll be wandering around, uh, and it's not the case where, like, if you run into a Pokemon, like, it, it may not necessarily automatically uh, uh, start a battle sequence. You might just take damage. So, like, you as a trainer have an HP bar, um, and if you take too much damage, like, you, you'll have to go back to base camp and rest up. 
um, looks like it'll have like mission based gameplay instead of sort of being a, um, Uh, a little more sort of like uh, Pokemon Snap <clears throat> and how like you pick a mission, you go to base camp uh, and then you like you venture out from there. Um, or I guess kind of like Monster Hunter as opposed to, you know, you have this like big long narrative quest type thing uh, like most Pokemon games do. However light the narrative may be. Um, there will be uh, Hisuian forms and evolutions uh so this is so um that is the name of the region which is supposed to be a precursor to Sinnoh um but there will be some specific forms and evolutions uh including uh so like Stantler is getting an evolution um uh Basculin is getting an evolution called Basculin Legion um I think Braviary is getting a a region specific form, um, and th and things like that. They are reintroducing the concept of like ride Pokemon, so um, you won't have to rely on HMs, um, and uh, you will be able to just like throw a Pokeball to catch Pokemon, um, or sometimes Pokemon you'll have to battle them to like weaken them first before you can catch them, um. This is supposed to be set, like, before, like, at some point before modern society. So, you know, no Pokemon centers. Like, you go back to base camp and you rest up. Like, that's how you heal. Um, there is, like, the, the Pokedex, like, they call it a Pokedex, but it's basically, like, a notebook. Uh, like, it's not, it's not tech-based. Um, uh, not really any trainer battles because um, sort of like what we saw with uh, Monster Hunter Rise, this is tend to be like this is this is precursor to formal Pokemon owners, you know, like formal, you know, Pokemon trainers and things like that. Uh, and it's like we don't really know anything about Pokemon, so you're almost like a Pokemon Ranger to go out and like study them. Uh, you know, they talk about how, like, they don't know that Wurmple evolves into something uh, in, in the trailer that they showed. Um, so things like that. Uh, I mean, the art style, not great. Um, it's kind of got that, like, uh, uh, you know, 3D Pokemon games art style, which is a little bland. Um, the open world stuff, like, on a macroscopic view, looks nice. But then, like, you, you zoom in and you get that, like, very you know, sort of bland art style there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it is a really, um, to echo a comment from in the chat from Aaron engineer, uh, yeah, it is a neat concept of like, as human society grows and develops, uh, Pokemon sort of get pushed out into the tall grass areas. Although we see, I mean, like in sword and shields, wild areas, they're not relegated to the tall grass. It's just in the tall grass, like you're guaranteed to get like a random encounter, um, as opposed to an on the field, uh, encounter. Um, so yeah, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, some of the Pokemon that are in the uh, graphic that I have up here include Bidoof, uh, Ralts, we see Rhyhorn, Pikachu, uh, Luxio, um, uh, Lucario, I couldn't remember his name for a second, we got Braviary, um, no, sorry, that's Staravia, but we do have Braviary, we know that, uh, as well as the starters, we've got Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott. Um, so an interesting mix of, like, starters from different generations, mixing and matching. Um, there is, uh, so, they have confirmed there will not be competitive battling in this game. Um, that was part of the trailer presentation. Uh, uh, competitive battling is still going to remain um, in Sword and Shield. Um, so... Uh, but otherwise, um, you know, looking forward to seeing more about this. It's supposed to release in January, so they do have some time to work on it a little bit more. Um, but I expect this is mostly going to be in, like, optimization and polish and, and um, quality assurance stage as a, and, local, and, like, finalizing localization as opposed to working on base mechanics, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that's that. <clears throat> Next up, Monster Hunter Rise, uh, next collaboration, next Capcom collaboration, so sort of in-studio collaboration, uh, is with Street Fighter, 
Uh, on Friday, August 27th, there's going to be an event request reward to get uh, Hunter Laird armor for Akuma uh, from Street Fighter. Um, so this is one of those like very high quality layered armor types um, that we saw a lot of in Monster Hunter World, where it'll have like custom animations uh, for different weapons, you know, custom emotes. And things like that in the in the trailer that they showed, uh, there was like lots of like just punching monsters, shooting fireballs, doing like his spinning kick move. Um, so, yeah, I I dig a lot of these very uh, like when they go really in depth to change um, a lot of the visuals for this stuff. And I mean, it's a free update, right? Uh, and that, you know, it, it makes it so that like it brings you back into the game to do like that event quest. Granted, probably not going to be very difficult. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is just like a fun little update. This isn't like a big content patch. Um, but my hope is that they do plenty of these because they did a lot for Monster Hunter World and they did some really neat crossovers. Uh, you know, they did one with uh, Final Fantasy 14. They did one with The Witcher. Um you know, they had ones, you know, the in-studio ones included, like, uh, there was, um, Palico, there was a Palico set of layered armor where you turned your little Palico into Mega Man, uh, all sorts of great stuff. They had a version of this where you, where it was, uh, Ryu, um, and I'm pretty sure that's, they'll probably, um, uh, conceptually copy over a lot of that stuff, um, for Akuma, um, but yeah, Ryu had like a lot of custom emotes and things so that like you could shoot fireballs and, and they actually deal damage to the monsters. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, it's been a while since I actually played Rise. Uh, so um, definitely looking forward to doing that quest. All right, that is going to wrap up our quick fire news. Um, so why don't we head on into our deep dive and we, we're going to talk about this uh, Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. Um, so if you don't want any, any potential spoilers, I know it's just a trailer, but like there are some people that don't even want to listen to it. Um, I'm just going to give you fair warning. We're going to do a deep, deep dive on that trailer and talk about what's in it. Okay. So a uh, couple takeaways here. Um, is that at the end of, uh, far from home, um, we see that like, uh, uh, Peter Parker's identity is leaked and, um, this sort of deals with like the ramifications of that. Um, and so, uh, there'll probably be some big play up from J Jonah Jameson who, you know, has been all sorts of against Spider-Man and is probably reveling in the fact, although, you know, I, I don't know if he might revel in the fact that he's basically, like, campaigning against a high schooler. Uh, so, I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, some great moments with, with Stephen Strange. Um, and just, you know, kind of playing off of, of Peter's awkwardness and, and uh, having a little bit of humor there. Um, but like he goes to the, I believe it's the Sanctum Sanctorium is where Dr. Strange operates out of. Um, <laughs> a high schooler who could kill people. He's a menace. Uh, never mind the fact that. Uh, I mean, basically he doesn't. But a whole, a huge part of the trailer is like, I guess he is under investigation for the possible murder of uh Mysterio um you know and conveniently ignoring the fact that like you know Mysterio uh was basically like threatening to kill all sorts of people um and and I I'm sure breaking all sorts of laws and everything uh for for doing what he was doing um uh and the fact that like I mean, uh, Mr. also made that video that made it look like Peter Kim. Oh, that is true. That's right. Um, I did forget about it. It's been a while since I've seen Far From Home, uh, but that is true. 
Um, whereas in actuality, like Peter was entirely acting out of self-defense. Uh, <laughs> yes, 2020 was five years long. It, 2020 was a decade. Um, but I mean, it's also like we watched it last year, uh, because I, we didn't see it in theaters. Um, but, uh, the question I have is um, Peter goes to the Sanctum Sanctorium and it's like there's snow everywhere and I want to know what's up with and like uh, like all the all the folks there are like dressed up in winter coats and everything. So like I want to know why it's like why there's three inches of snow inside the building. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I'm interested to see like how this fits in the timeline with regard to uh, Shang-Chi. Um, because uh, I'm, I'm curious if it happens like at the same time ish. Um, since basically Steven's left alone uh, <laughs> and like, that's basically where the trouble starts. Um, uh, and ultimately like unclear if if Doctor Strange helps cause the multiverse nonsense, or if it's like symptomatic of what's already in progress happening. Um But uh and also how this fits with like into the Spider-Verse. Like, does this suddenly make into the Spider-Verse part of the MCU? Um But ultimately, Doctor Strange casts a spell. To make everybody forget that Peter's Spider-Man, which like that also brings the how it's worded. Brings up questions for me, because like, does that mean. That like strange also forgets that Peter's Spider-Man, does it mean that Peter forgets that he's Spider-Man because he says everybody and like they play up the fact that like, you know, that's what it's going to do. It's going to make everybody forget. Uh, so I don't know. Um, also, I'm curious, uh, as to how he's able to do the time magic without the time stone, because the time stone's gone. Um, like it, it's, it's gone, uh, because in Endgame, they pulled them from the past, so they returned them. So like, it ended up still being destroyed. Um, so that, that's another question that I have, but then we get, so then we get into like the spell goes off and it does multiverse shenanigans and opens up multiverse stuff. Um, I, I am curious to see if this is going to be a film that like Dr. Strange, it's going to be one that you want to see in 3d, like in the cinema. Um, so de I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Um, how that works with where we may or may not be with, uh, like the Delta variant and, and COVID regulations and, and things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the effects look like they'd fit really well with, with actually viewing it in 3d. It's got, it's got a lot of those like folding things and opening things up and spatial geometry, uh, that, that Dr. Strange had. Um, and then, uh, and then actual confirmation in the trailer of like visual confirmation of all the past Spider-Man films, uh, coming together. Uh, you know, we see Doc Ock, we see, uh, allusions to the Green Goblin, we see allusions to Electro, um, so yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, you know, no sign of Tobey Maguire, or Andrew Garfield, uh, not there. There still isn't an, a clear indication if they are going to be in the film or not. Um, or if they're, you know, I th the, the theories are that it'll be in the next trailer, which will be like maybe the last trailer. Um, and that's when they'll reveal them, uh, or, or whether or not they get revealed. Um, I think there was also uh, 
I think I saw there was a reference to the the lizard as well, which was in one of the, I think it was in two. Um, maybe I think it was Spider Man two, um, in the Tobey Maguire series. Uh, but yeah, so this will be a wild ride. Um, I I hope they they. They they go full in on the multiverse stuff and they they pull in like oh is in the, okay so is in uh what was it the amazing Spider Man or maybe Amazing Spider Man two um if it was the second Garfield film um but uh if if they actually pull it like it would be wild if I don't know like at the end of the film or even like, even if, if they're saving it, like, I mean, could we see Miles Morales show up? You know, like, are we going to, are we going to get into the spider verse, get pulled in as well? You know, uh, get, get Miles Morales, get, uh, get noir Spider-Man, get spider ham. Uh, you know, get, get it animal versions of superheroes team and you get uh alligator loki and and frog thor and spider ham uh you know that that would be great i i uh so here's the like i really wasn't a a big fan of the past spider-man films like i saw spider-man one in theaters um when it came out and like i kind of didn't watch any of the other ones um but I'm still excited uh to see them actually make this happen. Uh if only for the fact that like it, there was a time when we almost never got Spider-Man in the MCU. So and now to have like oh hey, guess what? We we heard you like Spider-Man. Now you can have all of the Spider-Man. Um I mean, the, the only way they can make it better is if they like figure out a way to incorporate like the Spider-Man, you know, the, the Spider-Man cartoon meme of, you know, uh, uh, two, two versions of Spider-Man pointing at each other. Um, I really want that to happen because <laughs> if they're going to do it, like, and if they didn't already do it in Spider-Verse, um, because I also, I have, haven't seen Spider-Verse yet. And I know that's a travesty. It's awful. Uh, it's just time and place haven't happened. Um, I would like to see it. Uh, Spider-Man cartoon arc where it's the group of Spider-Man. Um, oh, is it? Oh, all right. So they've already done it. So you, you can't do it now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, or. You know, lean into uh, like lean into all the different stuff of Spider-Man if they're if they're really going to lean hard into it. Um, I mean, it would be great if. Uh, I don't know, even if it's a short sound clip or something, having like the 90s cartoon theme play somewhere um, really, really lean in. Uh, and uh, and if this is going to be an event, it, the thing is, like, there's been there's constantly been theories um, lately, like in phase four of the multiverse stuff uh, of how are they going to get X-Men and the Fantastic Four in here? So like, once again, we are, is this going to be the event where, you know, in a stinger, are we going to see, you know, X-Men? Are we going to see Fantastic Four? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it would, uh, it, it, it'd be weird. Uh, like that would be a, that would be such a weird crossover, right? Because Fantastic Four and X-Men have been Fox before. Um, I don't, here's the thing. I don't think Deadpool's going to make an appearance. Um, I... I don't, I don't know. I think they'd want to keep Deadpool separate. 
um, just because of the, the R rating. Um, and like, I don't know if it would be because the thing is like in order to, in order to do a crossover into the MCU proper, like they would have to tone down everything to make it PG 13. Um, which I think, you know, they, I think they could do. Um, I think they'd have to be cl very clever with it though. Um, and I mean, because I, I mean, because those movies are, they're hard R rating, um, in terms of like violence language. Um, that is true. Uh, but I mean, that was done as like a one-off joke. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking if they did something like constantly cutting off, you know, whenever, whenever Wade would like swear, uh, or, you know, or that would not be kosher for a PG-13 film. Um, or so it, but, you know, they would also have to tone down like a lot of the violence and, and gore and stuff. Um, so mate, I, I don't know. Uh, I would not expect it. Um, but it's, we also, we live in. As far as the MCU is concerned, we live in strange times. Um, that's a pun. Uh, <laughs> uh, and is, who knows? Who knows? Um, is I thought I heard there is there's a, a popular theory that this is uh, the very beginnings of trying to set up Galactus being the next big thing. Um, because, I mean, it's essentially, like, where do you, like, like, if you're going to have a big, huge cosmic event, like, where do you go from Thanos and the Infinity Stones? Uh, and so the thought is, like, it would be Galactus, because, you know, he devours worlds. Uh, or, I don't know. Uh, Beyonder? I'm not familiar with Beyonder, so I can't say yes or no. I don't know. But, um, he's in the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. Interesting. Uh, oh, there's another popular theory going around right now that Matt Murdock appears in the trailer. Uh, Matt Murdock from the Netflix series. Uh, mayor, it it's likely wild speculation. It's based on like shots of arms and hands, <laughs> and like like shirts and pants, because and no actual face. Uh, so I don't know. I mean that that would also be wild if they were to if they were to actually like also connect it to the the Netflix. Um, Marvel properties, uh, especially since there's a lot of division amongst Marvel directors, even as to whether or not those are canonical. Um, I think it was, I think it was, uh, there was an interview with James Gunn who said he doesn't consider them to be canonical to the MCU. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Netflix Marvel shows. Canon. Um, let's see, Marvel director. Yes. Um, yeah, so it's James Gunn. Uh, says any shows before WandaVision aren't MCU canon, uh, which that doesn't make any sense. Like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. directly ties into the events. <laughs> like, that was the whole point of the show. Uh, so, I, I don't know. Um, but I, th I think it would be super cool. Because then that means that you could theoretically bring Kingpin back. Um, 
Because Kingpin's a big Spider-Man villain. Um, let's see. Um, because I think as of the end of Daredevil, Kingpin was still alive. Um, but yeah, so I mean, so that would be great, you know. Uh, is there? It, it's, it's so many references in the trailer that the internet is going wild with uh was trying to figure everything out lots of, lots of little puzzle pieces conspiracy theories everywhere um and probably the biggest one is is Matt Murdock <laughs> uh being in the scene when they're like interrogating Peter so um which if that's true I think it'd be great like actually get like a real tie in to those properties um, since when they were initially shot, like they refused to formally acknowledge the two, because at the time I think it was, um, the film studio and the TV studio at Marvel were like in conflict with each other. And so like, that's why like they never referenced the Avengers directly or, uh, you know, the New York crisis, uh, you know, like they alluded to it, but you know. They never said like, oh, the Hulk. It was always like the big green guy. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Um, yeah, we're it's uh, we're still in a weird time. It's we're we're trying to figure out at what point we want to actually go to the movie. Like, because we thought about it for Black Widow, and then it never happened. Um, because it's between the Delta variant stuff and just uh, uh, having to essentially get childcare if we want to go to the movies. Um, it just it, it hasn't materialized. Um, so who knows? Maybe maybe by the point that Spider-Man comes out or Shang-Chi. Um, it's I just I don't I don't know how I feel about paying the $30 or whatever for Disney plus to, to watch it there. Um, but I mean, if it's the case where we're just not going to be able to go and see the films, maybe, I don't know. It's that, that's a whole complicated other, other thing. Um, especially, uh, with the lawsuit from Scarlett Johansson over not including, like essentially since contracts were for that film for, for Black Widow were drafted well before uh, COVID happened and kind of like before Disney plus really became a thing. Uh, there was no discussion about royalties from the streaming service. And now that basically we're, we're in an age where as soon as it comes out of theaters, like it goes right to the streaming service or it's available like at the same time, for a premium price, uh, it's not included in the contract for royalties. Um, so that's, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's complicated. It's messy. Um, I think ultimately it would be nice to go see it in the theater. Um, so here's open, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't so but yeah uh I want to see where this sits in the timeline with Shang Chi, um. If it's like before, if it's after, if like that's the reason why uh. Um, is the character's name Wong? Goes and and heads like leaves Stephen alone, which like you can't do. <laughs> you know he's gonna get into trouble. Uh. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm also just, I'm, I'm also kind of excited for, for Shang-Chi. Um, I really hope that movie does well and it, and it's good. Uh, so. All right. 
I mean, I think I've probably talked long enough. Uh, uh, do we have any further thoughts or commentary from the peanut gallery? Um, before, uh, before I round out this episode. Not seeing any. So, uh, we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, thank you everyone for, uh, joining us for this episode of the podcast. Uh, if you would like to see more content from 8-Bit Adventures, you can check out our website at 8-BitAdventures.com. Over there, you can find comics, artwork, podcasts, streams, VODs, and more. Uh, if you would like to help support that content, uh, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash 8-BitAdventures. Uh, you can support on Patreon for as little as one American dollar a month. Um and that helps pay for hosting costs for the website, for the podcasts, um, and for uh, resources um, that I use to produce those projects. Uh, and finally, our opening theme is one uh, by Professor Shy Guy. <clears throat> um, please go check out his work over at professorshyguy.bandcamp.com. Um, he is a chiptune artist. He does a lot of original work as well as some great covers uh of of existing stuff um so i always like to throw him a shout out uh and that is it so as always have fun everyone happy gaming and enjoy your pie cake